So today I'm going to test the antenna switching rate uh, between all these readers here. I've got the uh, the Motorola FX 9500, which is kind of the benchmark. Everyone agrees that seems to be uh, the most reliable, kind of the de facto, the best the best reader um, out there. Uh, of course, that's debatable, but um, that's the one that most users seem to trust. And so, uh, same for me. You know, that's that's the uh, if we ever have a, a difficult event, maybe we're doing a, a chip start with hundreds or thousands of people flowing through, then this is the reader I want to use, the, the FX9500. Um, a, a user sent me a very interesting video um, where he had a FX9500 hooked up to uh, what I believe are some race result mats, and uh, he had an RFID meter over that mat, and it was pegged out at 100%, and then he walked over to the, a second line of mats, you know, same, same uh, model and everything, um, the only difference was it was being um, it was hooked up to a FX9600, and with that reader it was um, jumping back and forth between you know 50% or whatever to up to 100% instead of a consistent 100% coming out of the antennas. So I decided to uh, to do the same test. I've got a uh, Motorola FX9500 here. We're going to use that first. Uh, then we're going to test the uh, FX9600, and then I've got a uh, uh, you know the board that's in the 9600. It's my understanding it's the same board in the FX7500, so we're going to test that next. And then I've also got an FX7400. Um, so we're going to test all of these. I'm also going to test the uh, Sense Array uh, race kit. Um, since this race kit. Since this, I think is how they say it. Uh, we struggle with that. But anyways, we're going to test that. I'm going to try to keep all variables the same. Even uh, the antennas uh, with the eight ports, I'm going to keep the main one I'm testing as port one. Um, and try to make sure that there's no variance of any kind except for the readers. Uh, and so same power supply, same everything. Um, so the setup here is I've got all of seven antennas just lined up here. And I'm going to use one as my, uh, you know, I'm going to let these all cycle through, but I'm going to only read from one. I don't want this to be pegged out 100% because this may be picking up two or three antennas at the same time. Uh, so this is going to be... Um, yeah, I'm not going to touch this meter at all. I'm simply going to switch the readers out, but this will be uh, what we're going to be watching. Um, I did set out a hue tag here, not really necessary, but just so I can have you know the light flashing in the uh, in the software there. But uh, but yeah, so this is the setup, and so let's see what happens here with the FX9500. Now I'm going to use a clock screen. I can use any screen, but obviously that's the one that people care about the most. And there's no difference in programming, uh, you know, the commands I send to the reader uh, with this screen versus any other. So, uh, but we'll, we'll go and use this. All right. So I'm take off capture chip start and go and start the clock, and then we'll start listening. Okay. So all eight antennas are lit up. So all my cables are good. Reader's good. Let's see what the major's doing. So as you see, it's cycling through pretty quick and pegged out. So I will pick this video up. I'm going to switch everything as quickly as I can over to the FX9600, but I don't want you to have to sit and watch me do that. So I'll stop the video and we'll pick it up with the 9600. All right, now I've got the FX9600 connected. All the same ports, same power supply. There was the FX9500 we just tried. All right, let's go ahead and start the clock. Tell it to start listening. We should see all the antenna ports light up, which we do. Um, so let's look at the meter now. Yeah, look at that. Now, whenever the FX7500 was first released, I um, had a customer report, uh, and it was pretty easy to, to uh, figure out that uh, it was cycling really, really slow, uh, terribly slow. So after quite a bit of digging and emailing uh, Zebra, they sent me some code that, um, you yeah, know, turns out the default settings uh, had a really slow cycle rate. And so uh, they sent me some code and it, I basically have it maxed out as fast as it'll go according to that documentation. And so uh, the performance from what it was increased dramatically. So I thought it was fixed uh, and good to go. And with this right here even, uh, users were very rarely reporting, you know, hey, if, if, if I was timing a large race, you know, I may have a few more misses than the uh, FX9500, but I did not realize it was still this bad. Um, so the cycle rate there is really slow. 
So let's go ahead and switch out the other readers just so we can see if it's the same issue, if, it, if the uh, FX7500 has the same issue. Um, but yeah, all right. Well, here we go. So I decided to experiment, and uh, I'm going to start off with just one uh, cable here. So with just one cable attached, you know, it shouldn't be cycling at all. And sure enough, what do we see? We see it's uh, pushing out power 100%. So let's go ahead and hook up one at a time. Start. Let's stop listening. All right, there's two connected. Let's start listening again. So there we go. Okay. Let's do three. Stop listening there. Of course, I would expect that there is a you know, the cycle rate, the more we add, the slower it goes. Okay, there's three hooked up. And you can tell it's significantly slower already. Just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and do four. We already know what it's going to do with eight, so we'll stop at four here. Okay. So that is four connected to the FX9600. Let's see if four connected to the 7500 gives the same bounce rate. Uh, I expect it will. Okay, so we just, I just hooked up the FX7500. Just now got a solid green light. Just switched the uh, readers in the software. So let's go ahead and start the clock and tell it to start listening. We should see four ports, yep, four across the top. And I can already hear it banging back and forth. About the same as the FX9600, I believe, with four antennas hooked up. So, that stinks. Let's go ahead and test the FX7400, and then we'll test the uh, Sense This System, so the race kit. Uh, very curious to see if the 7400 did the same thing or if it's like the 9500 where it cycles through faster and doesn't have that lag there. So we'll see what happens. Okay, we just got a solid green light on the FX7400. There's no sticker on the top, so I'll go and show you the bottom here just so you can see that it's a 7400. Alright, let's go ahead and start the race until it starts listening. Should see four panels light up. I may have typed in the wrong host name in my speed to get it in there, but I think it should eventually connect because it tries by whatever I put in first, and if that fails, it'll try by that default IP address. So I probably put the host name in wrong. But let's see. There it goes. Like in the software, it tries every possible way it can to connect uh, before giving up. So. Oh yeah, quite a bit faster than the uh, FX7500, so still bouncing, not not uh, solid like the 9500, but it's quite a bit faster than the 7500, because I remember it was like tick, 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 and uh, that one's beeping along pretty good, so yeah, pretty surprising. Um, let's do a test with the new synthesis system and see what that gets. Okay, so now we got the... Uh, since this race kit pro system so got that exact same position as the other antenna moved it over i've got his antennas over here again just pointing away from the main one uh it uses the only difference here is it uses a poe injector so i did have to switch the power supply from what the other one was using uh but yeah let's see what it does i'm cu curious on this one let me start the uh, clock and let me tell it to start listening all right, so there's the four antennas connected. Oh, pretty interesting. So it appears to be getting the exact same cadence there as the uh, 7500. So it'll be really interesting to see what uh, what they say about that. Now this is you know being an all-in-one unit. Hopefully, if we 
if they are if they are able to increase the weight the rate at which it cycles through hopefully it didn't cause a concern with overheating the unit um, but yeah so I mean it's mirror image to the uh, 7500 appears to be so or of course the 9600 so but yeah so that's the test pretty interesting uh, now again my first objective here was just to actually run through and test everything and then hopefully I'll report back or maybe this video will end with a uh, with some news that I've got it fixed so and of course a, a, a test with all eight antennas and it hopefully working just as well as the 9500 so all right time to get to work okay so I've got some good news here uh, turns out the very first thing I looked at um, the code that what that a um, little bit of a backstory. So when I first got the 7500 as a as a beta unit before it was officially released, uh, discovered pretty quick that the switching rate between the antennas was uh, like embarrassingly slow. I have a video on YouTube where you can watch uh, how bad it was straight from the factory. And so informed Zebra of the issue and, and basically you know uh, indicated, hey, we need to match the performance of the uh, the 9500 since that's what people are used to. And so they sent uh, some code back that shows, oh yeah, here's how you switch the uh, antenna switching rate and um, you know that the the value they uh, had in the email to me is what I used um, and I could have swore that I, I read at that point that or at some point that that was the minimum value you can go at and so I've been going this whole time assuming I had it switching as fast as it would go uh, I just dropped the number down and the more I dropped it it just kept working and uh, basically dropped it down to a point where it's it appears to match the performance of the, the 9500 so um, good news there uh, so I got eight antennas hooked up, and you'll see here that the uh, meter is pegged out just the same as the 9500. So pretty happy with the the results there. Now I'm probably going to make this a setting because I hate to push something out um, and then we find that there's some surprise or some problem. Uh, so I'll probably have a setting, a checkbox you can check off in the setting screen. It may be something kind of cheesy like match 9500 performance or so, something. Uh, I'll try to word it better than that, but anyway, some, some kind of setting we can turn it back to the way it was, um, but the default will probably be to turn this on, and then if we get no problems after uh, you know a couple weekends and I know it's been used for 15, 20 races or more, then of course I'll just take that setting out and it'll be the uh, the norm. So, uh, you know, that same setting appears to be available with the, uh, um, the Synthesis system, so the Race Kit Pro. Um, so I'll plug that back up and test that and see how that's uh, cycling too. 